A couple months ago, I was heading north to see my mom. As I was wont to do, I stopped the minute I crossed the New York state line to get gas. It's usually about 30 cents cheaper there. That particular morning, I was running a cup of coffee low, and so I went in to get one. I walked up to the newly remodeled checkout area, and what greeted me under the counter was literally 15 feet, four rows high, of solid orange. Now, did I tell you that I was in the midst of trying to get healthy? And there in front of me was every single conceivable kind of Reese's peanut butter cups one could imagine. I found myself instinctively reaching for one, maybe two. I could do three. It's going to be an hour and a half before I get to mom's for breakfast. But in the end, I paid for my coffee and went on with my trip. Believe me, it's not been the only time I've been tempted in the course of these last six months. In fact, when you get right down to it, every day is a host of little temptations. A temptation to hold on to, to grasp, to obtain, procure, clutch, conserve. Or who knows, it may be the last time we have an opportunity to get there, to have it. We need it. If we read the Bible, the whole condition of temptation is, can be blamed on our primordial parents. You know, that whole business in the garden with the serpent and the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They couldn't handle the temptation. They gave in and ate. And it's been downhill ever since. We've had to live with the burden of knowing what's right and wrong. It's the law. And the law kills. It burdens us. It's in light of that that we begin this Lenten journey each year with Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. For 40 days, he has been fasting. And then the Satan shows up and tempts him with food, with power, authority, chance to play God, to have it all. But Jesus doesn't give in. In fact, he fights Satan with the law, the Torah, quoting scripture. In the end, the Satan leaves him alone, but lies in wait for a more opportune time. And those times crop up in Jesus' ministry. There's a whole business with Peter and Caesarea Philippi, where Peter decides that, you know, if Jerusalem is risky, let's not go there. We'll find another way. We can go back to Galilee and hang out for a while until things cool off. And then in the garden, Jesus prays that his dad will take the cup from him. This impending ordeal. Perhaps there's another way. But in the end, Father, your way be done. And on the cross, he's tempted by the crowds to become the Messiah, 
that he is. To come on down from that cross and prove to them once and for all that he truly is who he says he is. But in the end, Jesus does not yield into temptation and thereby tips the balance. Whereas the old Adam gave in, the new Adam, the new man, yielded not to temptation. And because of that, sets us free. Sets us free from the bondage of eternal death. Because that's what happens when we start grasping and holding on. It kills us daily, inch by inch. Because the more we grasp, the more we have to grasp. And what we discover is that all that grasping really doesn't get us anywhere. We just get a lot of stuff that we've got to sort through at some point in life. Or we spend all our energy trying to hold on to it. Or we live in fear of losing it. Jesus holds before us another way. A way of generosity. A way of giving it away. A way of living into the reality of God's grace. When we live in grace, we don't need as much as we think we do. And hence, the temptation level is lowered. It doesn't make it any easier. We still struggle with temptation because, after all, we're still human. We won't end that temptation battle until our final judgment. A judgment that's already been rendered on the cross. And so we walk in hope. But we don't walk alone. Jesus goes with us on this journey. Giving us strength. Surrounding us with witnesses. And fellow companions on our journey. That together we may walk boldly into this new life and to keep each other out of trouble. I have to admit that as I stood before that counter of orange, it was only the voice of my coach that probably saved me. I knew I would have to have an accounting I knew she would be gracious, but still, I was embarrassed to admit that I had given in. It was just easier to avoid the whole thing. And so we walked as yet by faith. Not knowing where we go or what's going to happen to us, but we do know we don't walk alone. And so we battle those opportune times that Satan has. But we have one on our side who's managed to pull it off. And so we have hope. The glory of these 40 days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ, through whom all things were made, himself has fasted and has prayed. Then grant, O oh God, that we may too return in fast and prayer to you. Our spirits strengthen with your grace and give us joy to see your face.